Hi YouTube, it's Boston Girl 5560 and I'm going to first apologize for my appearance, but I had to do this video. One of my subbies requested it and um, since she's been on, I think, yeah, so she, since she's been one of my subbies from the beginning, I had to do this video for her and update her on her questions. Um, and this video is about IUI, ICI, and IVF. Okay. So I have my cards. It might be a part one and a part two video if I do not hit home all the things I'm trying to cover in this video because at first I did this video and it was kind of a rant and I felt like I didn't accomplish what I was trying to convey. So I actually made notes this time. The difference from an IUI is intrauterine and um, what they're doing is putting the sperm in your uterus. So the sperm doesn't really have any work to do but connect with the egg in your uterus which you it should be done by a medical professional if you do an IUI at home it is pretty dangerous and you could puncture something and I just wouldn't advise it I would advise a midwife a nurse um, or even a doctor you know to do your IUIs people have done it at home I just don't have the confidence in myself or anybody else who's not a medical professional to perform an IUI an ICI also can be done by a medical professional and it's intercervical insemination which means you put the sperm as close to your cervix as you can get and you know they have stuff you can buy online excuse the coughing that's my babes and you, you can buy online to um, inseminate yourself and what you do is you squirt the sperm right at your cervix and you let it do its job to enter your cervix and enter your uterus to meet the egg now that's safe enough for you to do at home and try that and IVF is when they take the eggs out of your body and, and and they go through a process of putting the sperm with the egg so it's kind of doing all the work and that's like the most expensive um, especially if you don't have insurance to cover that is the most expensive process and then they put it back in your body um, what I like to say is there's no guarantee with all three I know people who've done all three and have do, do not have a baby to show for it so there is no guarantee with any um any procedure it's just the luck of the draw and you know if you're successful but there's people who've done many IVFs and never gotten pregnant and there's people who've done one IUI and gotten pregnant so and that's beyond age too I mean this could be a 40 year old to a 25 year old anyways um drugs I'll go into drugs. Injectables are the most expensive drugs. I'll tell you right off the bat. And usually with insurance policies, and I can't speak for all of insurance policies, but they usually have a limit on how much pharmaceutical they'll pay for, like a lifetime limit. Like they might pay up to $5,000 and that's it, like lifetime limits or whatever. But they are the most expensive. The cheapest is Clomid and Letrozole. But Letrozole is not expensive when they start putting the other stuff against Letrozole or the other stuff with Clomid. Like there's also, um, if you go through a reproductive endocrinologist, they might give you the trigger shot. And the trigger shot like forces you to ovulate that costs money that's not cheap but if you're just physically taking clomid clomid has been around for a long time and a lot of gynecolo gyneco <laughs> gynecologists will give you clomid but a lot of times uh, reproductive endocrinologists want to monitor you which starts costing money when um they um they do ultrasounds and they're trying to pinpoint the best time to inseminate you with these ultrasounds like they can see if the egg is there or is it about to release and all this but these ultrasounds are not cheap and um but I know known people to use Clomid without you know a doctor's supervision but that is definitely on you I would I would suggest that you weigh the risks if you can get a prescription because I couldn't get a prescription I tried my best for someone to write me a prescription and they would not because I didn't have a relationship with a gynecologist I would always use an internal medicine person for my pap smears I never had female issues that I knew of until I started trying to have a child then I found out I had fibroids but they would never bothered me so I didn't Hold up. Be back. 
Okay, I'm back. I had to change a diaper, and it was one of those that needed a lot of attention. Anyway, so back to where I was. So drugs can be very expensive. Injectables are very expensive. Anything you need a needle to shoot yourself with, and even some of the pills, excuse my child, shush. Even some of the pills can be expensive. Clomid being the cheapest. Letrozole is pretty cheap too, but they like to add other drugs with letrozole. But letrozole seems to have less side effects than Clomid. And some people just do better on letrozole. Um, usually with insurance or if... Okay, so this all depends on you. How much time do you feel you have? Some people go straight to IVF. Some people try IUI. They say ICI is the least effective I wouldn't necessarily say that. I would say sperm counts like natural healthy sperm that is not frozen lasts three to five days. That's how much they think it lasts. Whereas frozen sperm can last 12 to 24 hours. This being a problem when you're trying to track your ovulation and get the egg and the sperm there at the same time. Hence why a lot of reproductive intracronologists want to use the ultrasound method, but that's not always a proven method. And the reason being is because a healthy 25-year-old still only has a 20% chance of the IUI working. Hence why they start adding the fertility drugs to increase that chance. Um... And some people do get pregnant with natural IUIs. I know two women over 40 that have gotten pregnant with natural IUIs. But they also um, hold true that they said that acupuncture and other things they were doing played in a part. That was their... Um, oh, Also, when using Clomid without a doctor's supervision, there can be... Um, several issues, uh, overstimulation, stuff like that, how you react to it. You don't really know. Um, so I would definitely weigh the risk. I did see on boards how women are going to get the drug out of the country opposed to a doctor because they couldn't get it through a doctor. I don't know if I advise that because you don't really know what you're getting. But anyways, um, before you do anything, I would... Do all the research and weigh the risks for yourself. Okay, me personally, I could not get a prescription for Clomid to save my life, even though my friend's doctor was passing it out. Like, she had a relationship with him for years, and he was giving it to her. I went to him, and he wouldn't give it to me, you know. So, I use soy isoflavonase, which I use every time I did my... Uh, my cycles with the known donor and uh that's i i got ava i got pregnant the first time actually and had a miscarriage in the fourth or fifth time that's when i got pregnant with ava so um i also looked into that and you can get that in walmart and um i never really went through how to do use that and if anybody wants to know how i particularly used it um, um just leave me a comment about a video or maybe i'll do a video about it um but that's what i used um even with um, acupuncture and all the other things now if you want to go on the cheap, cheap, the cheapest way to go about this is to buy an insemination kit and get a guy who's going to supply the sperm. With that, you also have to weigh in that STDs and all this and that. Like, how do you feel comfortable about this person? Are they going to show you their medical records? How recent are their medical records? I mean, you want to also take that into play. Also, the fact of the legal ramifications that could happen in the future. I, def I definitely take that into play also. Now either you can have sex to inseminate or you can buy an insemination kit which you can buy for $10 a piece offline. Um, and also the biggest thing about getting pregnant is to have a viable egg. That's one and we never know if you know if you have one or not. And also to get the sperm in the egg to connect in the right timing. Now the big problem with that Frozen sperm, you have more of a lead. I mean, live sperm, you have more of a leeway. You got three to five days. So you try to do it before, in the middle, in the end, and you know, you got more days. But when you're paying three to eight hundred dollars for sperm, you're trying to time it exactly right, you know. And when I was doing inseminations, I did two, two um, inseminations at once. You know, one one day and one the next day to increase the chances because they don't only last you 12 hours. And I actually did get pregnant on the first IUI. It just didn't last. 
I mean, I, I had another miscarriage. So it's all about timing um, with uh, the IUIs. And um, if you're going to use um, live sperm, I feel it's easier because, first of all, it lasts longer. So you don't necessarily have to totally pinpoint the time. You can be around the time and know you're, you're hitting the spot opposed to frozen sperm. It's more of a guessing game of when you're going to do it. Okay. The question is, where do you go from here? It's really what you feel comfortable with. I was so desperate to have a baby. I was willing to do whatever. And as you see, my persistence weighed out and I have a baby now. But there is no guarantees. Even the people, I've seen people who spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on all these IVFs and still do not have a baby. So I do feel there's a level of faith and there's a level of, I always feel like, in this process, you need to educate yourself. And I really wish there was somebody um, doing YouTube videos that I could talk to um, and ask questions to when I was looking because I felt like I did a lot of trial and error and um, I could have skipped over some of the stuff if I had more information. And um, But I feel like if anybody has a question, I'm here to answer it. And the reason I'm doing this video is because one of my subbies, who has actually been my subby since I started doing these videos about single mother by choice, asked a question and I wanted to give her the full information that I have. I am not a doctor. This is all my opinion. And um, also, another subby came and told me that I triggered a thought for her to look for midwives in your area that would do inseminations. And that's another cheap way to do an insemination, an IUI in the comforts of your own home or their midwife midwifery clinic than paying the more expensive prices at a reproductive endocrinologist. And sometimes they also have storage facilities for sperm where they'll hold a couple vials for you, which could also save you on the shipping costs, meaning you only have to ship one tank with two or three or four or five or six vials. Also, I will put, I will look on my list because I was told um, cheap sperm does not mean bad sperm. And the, the major fertility um, sperm banks are very expensive. So there are a few cheaper ones. Um, they, they might not have the selection and um, you can pick like your primary, you know, this. Okay, that was the, the baby wants to be in the video. You might, baby wants to be in the video. Okay, so with the sperm banks, the cheaper sperm banks, they might not have like the primo selection like a Fairfax or a California cryo, you know, who has all tons and millions of selections and postdoc degrees and stuff like that. But if you can't afford the eight or nine hundred dollars that they want a vial, I totally understand. And I know um, I don't have the current price list of these cheaper places, but I will put the website uh, on there and you can look them up and see if they're more affordable to you if you cannot find someone to give you the sperm for free. So that is my update. I will put the sperm banks in the comments below and I will run them across the screen. Uh, <laughs> Miss Thing wants to be in the video. Do your cameo. This is the product of my determination to be a single mother by choice. So if you've been following my videos, you know how she came to be. If not, you can go back and see how I got this beautiful little girl. Bye YouTube.